Are you frustrated with your life? Do you have too many obligations, too many responsibilities? Are there perhaps things in your home that you're dissatisfied with that don't bring you joy? Do you possibly have people who just suck the living daylights out of you? I hate to break it to you, my friends, but you have orange chickens. Hi, I'm Shelly from TamingFrenzy.com, and I happen to know a thing or two about orange chickens that I'd like to share with you today. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking, Shelly, I don't own any chickens. I don't even live in the country, and truth be told, I wouldn't know what to do with a chicken if I met one. <laughs> But you do have orange chickens in your life. You may not be calling them that. You may not even really realize that they're there. But if you answered yes to any of those questions that I just asked, then you are the proud or perhaps the not so proud owner of at least one orange chicken. But first of all, let's back up for just a minute. What is an orange chicken? Well, let me tell you a little story. Many years ago when my grandmother passed away, my mother and I were in her house and we were cleaning some of the things out as you do after, you know, a loved one passes. And my mother was up on a stool in one of the rooms that had a lot of bookshelves when she took down from the bookshelves the pair of the ugliest ceramic orange chickens that may have ever been made. And she handed them to me and she said, you know, your grandmother never did like these orange chickens. And I remember looking at those chickens and saying, well, these are some pretty ugly chickens. Why did she have these if she didn't like them? And she said, well, they were given to your grandmother by a cousin Nail back many years ago when she and your grandfather first moved into this house. And she always felt that, well, if you were given a gift that you were obligated to keep it and you were obligated to display it. So she did. Now, my grandmother died in the late 80s and she had moved into the house in the early 40s. So for over 40 years, this pair of ugly orange chickens had sat on the bookcases in this room. Now to understand how out of, totally out of place these chickens were, let me tell you a little something about my grandmother's house. She was a meticulous housekeeper. She had pink carpet, pale pink walls, a white couch that was white until the day she died, even though she had kids on it. And she, her, her taste ran towards French provincial furniture. You know, the kind with the pretty curlicued legs. And she had pictures and statues of uh, Blue Boy and Pinky, if you've ever seen those in art museums. She was a little bit of a girly girl in terms of the colors and the styles that she liked. This pair of garish orange chickens did not fit in her house but yet she'd kept them there all those years, even though she didn't like them. And I, I, I thought to myself, hmm, she's kept these chickens, but they're hideous. And so my mother and I promptly decided the chickens had to go. And so with that, we threw the chickens in the trash. But the incident stuck with me because I thought about how many times my grandmother must have passed by the shelves, looked up at those chickens and just cringed and thought, I don't like those chickens. I don't, they don't go with my house. They clash, they're ugly, they're not my taste. And yet then felt like she had to keep them and she walked on. So obviously when I talk about orange chickens in our lives, I'm not really referring to a physical chicken, but nevertheless, it's a pretty good metaphor for the things that are in our lives that steal our joy, that cause us distress, that make us frustrated, that gives us anxiety, that possibly bring back bad memories. An orange chicken then is anything that is in your life, but that is not adding to your life in a positive way. So those things that are in your life that are stealing your joy and causing you to live a life that's less happy, that's less positive, that's less fulfilled, that's less authentic than it could be, those are your orange chickens. Now your orange chickens come to you from any of four different areas and these are the areas that I talk about on my blog Taming Frenzy. And these areas are work, home, people, and then the internal things. Now we all have different orange chickens but some examples might be, for example from work, you could have one of those horrible bosses. You could have a boss that, that demeans you, that makes you feel inferior who steals your ideas, who makes unreasonable demands, who does not appreciate the work you do. You could have coworkers that possibly force their work off on you. 
that are negative, that are gossips, that just bring you down. You may just dislike the work you do. You may be in a, a field or in a job that you just totally don't like. You could be frustrated with your pay or maybe the lack of advancement that you're getting. You might even be looking around and seeing others that are possibly less experienced or less competent than you that are getting the advancements and the promotions that you'd like. You may feel like your job's a waste of time. You just flat may not like the work. You may feel like it's a job that's not making any positive contribution to the world. So all of those are orange chickens that can be, can be in your life due to the work area. Our homes, unfortunately, can also hold a lot of orange chickens. You know, you may dislike your house. It may be too big, too small. Perhaps it's a style that's not your favorite. You may just not like your neighborhood or your town or your state and wish that you lived somewhere else. You may be frustrated because of too much stuff in your house. Sometimes we feel like we're drowning in possessions. You may feel like you've got too much clutter. You may be frustrated because you're not getting the help that you need from other family members. You know, mom is not the only one who lives in the house and she's certainly not the only one who makes any mess. You may also be frustrated because you don't have systems in place at your home to help you do things like getting the meals on the table and getting the laundry done, keeping up with the cleaning, the maintenance, the chores, all of those things. Now, unfortunately, orange chickens also come to us from other people. Sometimes those orange chickens are other people. Your orange chicken from other people may be that you're frustrated with a significant relationship in your life. Perhaps it's not as emotionally supportive as one that you need. You may have trouble with your parents or your in-laws. There may be conflict there that you're caught in the middle of and you feel like you're in the middle of a tug of war. You may have kids that are a difficult stage. In fact, sometimes it seems like every stage of parenthood is difficult. When they're newborns, they don't sleep through the night. and When they're toddlers, they learn to say no and express that independence. Then they get to those tween years when adolescence is coming on and they're dealing with hormones and the physiological changes. Then they turn into teenagers and we worry about who their friends are and we worry about them learning to drive. And we start thinking about the fact that they're gonna be leaving home soon and going off to college or uh, into the world of work, going off into their own homes. Those, those can be orange chickens too. You may have friends that you have to be careful with, those frenemies. And sometimes social media has really made the, the frenemy problem all that much closer to home. And of course, we all know what frenemies are. They're the, they're the ones who smile at us and lead us on, but then take secret delight in our problems and our misfortunes. And sometimes they're actively trying to cause those for us. You may have major in-law problem. And you know, sometimes the holidays coming up or any kind of special occasion literally becomes a, a conflict with people. And then the last type of orange chicken that you may deal with is the kind that comes from inside. You know, the way I came up with the name of my blog was I had this vision of this little critter or little person or whatever sitting on my shoulder, kind of a two-faced. And a lot of times she whispers negative things in my ear. And I think most women probably have one of those that sits on their shoulder. It's that voice that whispers in your ear that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're definitely not thin enough. You're not talented enough. You're not ever going to amount to anything. And that the things you wish for and long for, that they're just silly and you're wasting your time. Those little voices, they chip away at your self-worth and your self-esteem. Some of those orange chickens may be roles and responsibilities that you've taken on. The point is there's lots of areas that can give us orange chickens, but how do they get into our lives? How do we end up with those orange chickens? Well, knowing how we get those orange chickens in the first place can help keep us from getting more orange chickens. And there's several ways that orange chickens sneak into our lives. The first way is that we choose to ignore the orange chickens. Sometimes we choose to ignore those things because it's easier to just accept the status quo when people give us something or when they ask for us for something than it is to rock the boat. We don't want to offend someone. We don't want to be perceived as ungrateful or uncaring. So we just 
we just ignore those orange chickens and we just pretend they're not there. Sometimes we hold on to orange chickens because we're waiting until we have something better to get rid of the orange chickens. Now this comes from a mindset of scarcity. You know, perhaps we don't trust that uh, we will be able to attain the things that we need later. We may be afraid that if we get rid of something that we won't have the financial wherewithal to replace it, to purchase something new. We also may be afraid to deal with the empty space in our life. You know, it's easy to fill up our lives with stuff because empty space can be very scary. And that's whether that's physical space in our home or mental space or emotional space. It's easier to fill it up with something, even if we don't like it, than it is to deal with that discomfort that comes from that empty space. Oftentimes though, we pretend that we like orange chickens. For example, if, if we're at a job and we're frustrated and perhaps we'd like to move into a different position, we'd like to achieve, but maybe those things aren't happening, sometimes it's easier to save face and pretend that, oh, I'm perfectly fine. I, I like this job. I didn't want that promotion. I didn't want to do that other task. It's easier to do that because it saves face and it makes us feel better and it's easier than it is to admit to ourselves and to others that we are unhappy with where we are. So we just pretend we like them. Sometimes though we actually encourage other people to give us orange chickens simply because we don't want to hurt their feelings. It's something we usually will do subconsciously. We don't really think about it. A lot of women, we've been trained to be people pleasers. Our automatic response is to say, sure, when someone asks us to do something. It's hard to say no. Oftentimes, we have been raised to believe that if we are assertive at all, that we're perceived as bossy or, you know, domineering or overbearing, all of those kind of things. So instead, we say things like, oh, thank you. That's lovely. I, I so appreciate it. And we settle for something that doesn't suit us or that we, we don't want. And we put other people's feelings and wishes above our own. Oftentimes those other people have convinced us that we really do like those orange chickens. We may not have the self-confidence to stand up and say, you know, I don't care for this. It's not my cup of tea. I would prefer something else, but thank you for thinking of me. These people instead will convince us that we like those orange chickens. They'll say subtle things like, well, you used to like that. You always have done that in the past. You've never said no. We've always counted on you to help us do this. And this is a subtle form of manipulation that ends up with you agreeing to do something or accept something that you don't want, primarily because they've laid on the guilt and that is very difficult to deal with. Sometimes though, we have convinced ourselves that we like the orange chickens. We feel powerless and so therefore, as a coping mechanism, we tell ourselves, this is fine. I'm perfectly fine with this. I don't mind. It's okay. I've got time, but it still gnaws at us. And then sometimes there's that insidious orange chicken that sneaks in because we just don't feel like we deserve anything better. This one's tough because it comes from inside. If you're suffering from feelings of low self-worth, low self-esteem, inferiority, we may just flat feel like we don't deserve anything better and so we settle. But that's not true. No one deserves orange chickens. So we need to get rid of those orange chickens. Why do we need to get rid of them? We could obviously just put up with them, but we're not happy. So all of these orange chickens have a negative effect on your life. They cause you stress. And once you get rid of these orange chickens, several things are gonna happen. The first thing is you're gonna be happier. You will feel more in control, not only of your home and your surroundings, but you'll feel more in control of your life, of your time, your mental outlook will be better, your joy will increase, your overall happiness, you will feel like a different person once you get rid of some of those orange chickens. 
you'll also be healthier once you get rid of those orange chickens. You know, these things that increase your stress levels, they cause all those stress hormones to be coursing through your bloodstream in your body. And over time, that's not good for you. Just like a person cannot live in fight or flight mode for an extended period of time, you can't live with those stress hormones in your body for an extended period of time. It is not good for you. Also, increasing the joy in your life, it leads to just greater life satisfaction. You're now not caught in that vicious cycle where you're upset and then you're frustrated and depressed and then you just resign yourself and accept it and then the cycle starts all over again. Once you get rid of some of those orange chickens, you will be much, much healthier. You will also find that you are more productive. You will have gotten rid of some of those roles and obligations, those extraneous commitments. Once you get rid of some of the physical stuff in your life, Think of the time that you're going to save. You don't have to dust it. You don't have to move it. You don't have to clean it. You don't have to wash it. And then also just the mental energy that's released from that. You're no longer worrying about it or fretting about it or being upset over it. All of that energy that's gone into worrying about your orange chicken will be gone. The thing is, though, you're the only one who can identify what's an orange chicken in your life. My orange chickens are not going to be the same as your orange chickens because everybody's situation is different. However, we all need to get rid of those orange chickens and how do we do that? That sometimes is the hard part. Well, the first thing to do is to admit that we've got orange chickens in the first place. You know, no problem was ever solved by ignoring it. Ostriches, unfortunately, are not very good problem solvers because they may feel better for the moment while they stick their head in the sand, but the minute they pull their head back out of the sand, the problem is still there. They didn't solve it. So the first step is to admit that we've got an orange chicken. The second thing we need to do is we need to identify and name those orange chickens. You know, a problem that is identified is easier to solve. And I'll give you an example here. Have you ever woken up from being asleep and you're laying there in the dark and you look off over to the side and you see a shadow or a shape and, and you're not sure what it is. And when you're not sure what it is, your mind starts filling things in. And all of a sudden that shape or that shadow becomes more ominous, more frightening because you're just not quite sure what's over there in the corner. But if you get up out of bed or you reach over and you turn on the light, now all of a sudden you can see what was causing that shadow or what the outline of that shape is. It's not so scary once it's in the daylight. Once you know what it is and you can name it, now you can turn the light off, you can lay back down, and even though you may still see the shadow or the shape, your mind knows what it is. It is easier to deal with once you identify it and name it, it becomes less frightening. The other thing you need to do is we have to identify the things that bring us joy in, in every area of our life. And I have some worksheets in the handouts that are going to help you do this. But understanding the things that bring you joy, that make you feel fulfilled, that bring you happiness, that's a first step, a good first step. And then we, also, we have to claim what it is that we want. You know, once we're going to get rid of this orange chicken, what do we want to come into our life in its place? And you have to give yourself permission to let the orange chicken go. You know, it may be that someone else is envious of your orange chicken. Let it go. Get rid of it for you. Also, we have to be realistic with ourselves. We might as well realize that the odds are good that we're not going to get rid of every orange chicken all at once. Now, it would be great if we could, but it's probably not really going to happen. Whether it's a, if it's a role or an obligation, you're going to have to ease out of those things or, or start telling people no. If your orange chicken is something physical, items in your house, you're going to have to go through the process of decluttering, cleaning, organize, getting rid of things. But give yourself permission to let it go. Start getting rid of those things. And then once you've gotten rid of your orange chickens, refuse to let them back in. They're sneaky little critters, 
and if you give them a foothold, they'll creep back in if you're not careful, and you'll look up and you'll have orange chickens in your life again. Now, it's possible to get rid of your orange chickens in a way that does not demean someone else or does not offend them, and in a way that validates your authentic self. You do not have to be rude or unkind to say no. Let me give you a little example here. Many years ago, my mother was asked to teach a class at Vacation Bible School. Now, my mother was not a teacher. <laughs> she would be the first one to tell you that was not her thing. But this particular summer, she agreed begrudgingly, and she taught the Bible School class. And I think she probably hated every minute of teaching that class. But still, she felt obligated, she felt pressured, she did it. But the next year, when, you know, spring rolled around and they started making plans for vacation Bible school, she was once again asked to be a teacher. But this time she said no. She, she couldn't teach a class, but that she would be happy to be the pianist and to, to help the children learn their songs, that she would play, that she would work with the choir and the music, and that she would provide snacks. Now, while my mother was not a teacher, my mother was a very talented musician, and that's what she did that year. She served as the, the musical director for the Vacation Bible School. She, you know, the opening ceremony, she took care of that. She helped us learn our songs. She had a natural gift for that, and she used that to help fulfill a need, but also to honor who she was authentically. It turned out that she was happy the people who were running Vacation Bible School were thrilled because this was a difficult position to fill, and she had a natural gift that allowed her to share and to contribute without being miserable. Now, my wish for all of us is that we take steps to identify those orange chickens and to get rid of them, to get them out of our lives, because these women we have lots on our plates. We're taking care of our families. Many are working outside the home. We have lots of obligations that we want to fulfill in the best way we can. And getting rid of the orange chickens is a good step to make us do that. But once those orange chickens are gone, I hope then you work on taming the rest of the frenzy in your life because as a busy woman, there's plenty. I'd love for you to come visit me over at my blog I've got a few special offers for you from this mom conference, and you just need to come over to tamingfrenzy.com and then look for the mom conference link and click there, and I've got some things for you. I hope to see you there. I would also love to see you come join our Facebook group. This is where we talk about some of the issues that busy women deal with, and it's also a place where we help each other tame that frenzy that we're all coping with. I would love to see you there and would love to have you join us. If at any point there's something that I can answer for you or help you with, please do not hesitate to call me, uh, to email me. You can email me at Shelly at TamingFrenzy.com. You can also find me on Facebook. Anyway, get rid of those orange chickens, take them off your shelf, throw them away. <laughs>